So I am going to start with this question in the first module. So why are we interested in joint distributions in general? Why do we care about joint distributions? Do you know of any real world example where you would want to do a joint distribution? Have you ever come across anything? Uh, so in many real world applications, right, we have to deal with a large number of random variables. Right? And we will go back to our favorite example of miling oil. That is all I care about. I want to become a billionaire someday. And this job is not going to make me a billionaire, so I have to find out an algorithm to drill oil from some place. Okay. So, for example, an oil company is interested in finding the probability of locating oil or finding oil at a particular location and this can depend on various random variables. Why do I call these as random variables? Because their values vary from location to location. So, what is our universal set here? You know, what is our universal set in this problem? All the locations that we are interested in and these random variables are mapping these locations to certain values right. So, at one location the depth would be certain something at the other location the depth would be something different and so on and this set can be mapped to multiple things right. There could be multiple random variables you could have depth, pressure, biodiversity, density and so on and this joint distribution which is written here is what we are interested in right or wrong. I am saying the company is interested in knowing this joint distribution. Is that a fair statement? Why are why do we care about joint distribution? We just want this conditional distribution. Why do I care about joint distributions? So, why learn a joint distribution and then marginalize it? Why do we care about joint distributions? I see your spirit. I mean not literally, but I uh, I get your spirit rather <laughs> I do not see your spirit, <laughs> but yeah I get your spirit. Uh, and I see where you are coming from, but actually all of these are, yeah sorry. No, I am not asking you to assume anything is independent yet. You could still find P of Y given all these variables without making any independence assumptions, right. Why do you want to do the joint distribution? In fact, all of you have given right answers and the answer is a collection of all your answers, right. That this is what we are interested in today but we might want to do something different tomorrow right. So, now this data is there you learn the joint distribution you can answer all these questions that you told me about. Now, tomorrow if you are a marine biologist or something you might be interested in the other thing what is P of x phi given all these other variables right. So, now if you start drilling oil from a location does the marine biodiversity in that location change that is again an interesting question to ask. What would be the impact of salinity on pressure? That could be another interesting that. So, all these random variables are there. If you have the joint distribution, you can ask all sorts of questions from that joint distribution. You can ask all sorts of conditional questions on that. You could ask all sorts of marginal questions on that. You could ask independence questions, right. So, if you want to know, if you want to find out definitely whether biodiversity gets affected by oil mining or not, you want to actually prove that is x phi independent of y. And this you can do it from the joint distribution. So, joint distribution is this kind of an encyclopedia which can allow you to answer all sorts of questions about different random variables in your ecosystem. Does that make sense? Right. In particular, from the joint distribution, you could compute this conditional distribution that you are interested in. Right. So, let us see some such questions of interest. So, one is we can find the conditional distribution. How do you get the conditional distribution from the joint distribution? How will you get this from the joint distribution? Divide what by what? I just heard some divide something. So, basically, you are dividing the joint by what? Marginal, right. So, we already saw that conditional is equal to joint by marginal. So, the joint distribution is given to you. Marginal is at least on paper straightforward because you just need to sum up for all variables. Of course, I encourage you to do it on paper and see how much time it takes, but at least on paper, that is easy. So, you will just get it from the joint distribution and the marginal distribution you can get the conditional distribution. And now, I could be as creative as I want I could put any variable on the left hand side and any variable on the right hand side I could put sets of variables on the left hand side right hand side depending on what kind of questions I find interesting in the given problem at hand. We can also find the marginal distribution. So, I would want to know what is the biodiversity generally across the ocean or what is the temperature and so on and I would want a distribution for that we can find conditional independences. 
why do we care about conditional independences? Again, all of these are valid arguments. And today, one main thing which I would like to emphasize on is why are conditional independences important? And among various reasons, I'll probably focus mostly on the practical aspects, which are computational efficiency as well as efficiency in terms of number of parameters. Right? Because eventually, we are going to do some modeling, uh, modeling in the context of machine learning, and uh, <laughs> and that's why we care about parameters and so on. Right? Okay. Uh, so, so that's just to motivate why do we care about joint distributions and the key answer here, the straightforward answer which I said is a summation of all the answers which I got is that if you have the joint distribution, you can answer all sorts of questions that you are interested in, right? Marginals, conditionals, independences and all of these and all of these are important. 